What's up guys, welcome to another edition of Game Tinkerer. Today I am going to be talking about my PS Vita dock that gives you HDMI, uh, video, and audio. And um, so let's get right into it. So this is a prototype. Um, now, this is done with uh, collaboration with my friend Tim. Um, and by collaboration, I mean that I am presenting it. He's doing basically all the work. Um, I'm just giving my feedback. He did provide me with this unit. Um, there is no money involved. Um, but I am saying that he's sponsoring this because he actually gave me this product. Um, and I want to give an honest review of the ins and the outs and what I think about it. And um, I think you're going to find that it's a, it's a pretty good product. Um, now this is 3D printed, so you can see the lines in it. Um, obviously this would be better if it was cold cast um, plastic process. Um, or, uh, I'm sorry, um, projection molding um, plastic. Um, so it would be much smoother, much better finish, stuff like that. Um, however, this is a low production model. Um, it's actually easier to do this um, for him. So with that being said, um, I'm going to go over what is what he is going to include in the final product. Um, the things that I like and the things that I love, um, some improvements and the ins and outs of making this work. So um, what comes with this is going to be the housing itself. Um, and for mine, he fully assembled it, uh, which was awesome. Um, you might notice this cable up like this. Um, in the version that you get, it will not be like that. I had to change the cable out. There are two different models of PS Vita. There is the 1000, which is the OG, um, which is basically called the fat model. Then there is a, um, a PS Vita 2000, which is the slim. Um, those will be different colors. They'll also have round buttons here and here um, instead of the oval. They're a lot thinner. They don't use a proprietary um, jack on the bottom. They use a mini USB, or I'm sorry, a micro USB, which is your standard um, that the products like this come with. Um, everybody's got at least 100 cables like that, I would think, in their, in their collection. So um, I do wish that I had a 2000 so that I could test that. Um, however, I do not. I have the old school. So, in this is the uh, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, which is conveniently located in here. Got to pull this out to get this off. Um, now, I need to put a zip tie on this cable because this cable actually fits underneath this unit here. Um, it plugs in here, and he gives a 180 degree USB adapter um, so that everything is nice and clean. Uh, there are no heat sinks on here because it's not really needed in this application. Um, you do have access to the audio jack, the HDMI, the power jack, the SD card which has the uh, um, Vita shell operating system on the side here. He includes a Bluetooth dongle, which is needed to get the audio from the device to HDMI. Um, you will have an additional two USB 2.0 slots, and you can wire this to the internet if you like. Um, however, it's not really needed. Um, this does include Wi-Fi, but again, it's not really needed because the OS is... Um, just to get video and audio from this to your TV or a capture device. So, um, so 
In this, he includes the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, a power supply, the adapter, um, the cable for both PSP 1000 and PSP 2000. And let me show you that. So basically, they'll come like this. Um, it does have screw holes. It does have a mount. Um, this one does not have the mount installed because... It was too thick in this area right here. So it was not allowing full contact into the console. Uh, so it was not allowing it to work. So I took that off. I put the screws back in the thing here um, so that I didn't lose those. Then I put this cable in here, which is why it's loose like that. Um, again, I can put a zip tie on it and it'd be perfectly fine. Um... And he does include the Bluetooth dongle. And that is all that he includes. Um, he did say that he wants this to be as retail as, um, as possible. And um, I think that that's a really good idea. It does up the price just a tad um, as far as how much it cost him. But he tries to get everything at bulk. Um, that way the prices can be lowered and he can offer it at a cheaper price, um, which I think is awesome. That's excellent business practice. And um, it's a really good idea all the way around. So um, this looks really nice. Like I said, this is the one with the proprietary connector. So you just connect it like this. That's plugged in all the way and then you just slide it in. Um, the connector would be nice um, for the mount. But um, in all honesty, this is perfectly fine. It goes and you don't mess with this anyway. So perfectly good. It looks awesome. Um, so I want to go over the things that I like and the things that I love. Um, the attention to detail in this prototype is amazing. Um, I love the refined design. Um, he went through several different iterations um, of his design and came up with this. Uh, this design is awesome um, for everything that it includes. And um, the, little, the little things here and there that he put into this design is awesome. Um, it's got a nice cover for the Raspberry Pi. And again, he did a space saver um, by including the 180 degree adapter. Um, so everything is nice and neat in here. You don't have any cables anything extra poking out um, really good cable management inside um, not so much on mine because like I said I need to put a wire tie on there or something but um, it's all up underneath there there's um, airflow to that somewhat um, could probably add a vent up here uh, but this doesn't you get hot enough for long enough to damage anything um, there's no real power being drawn from the processing um, just capturing the uh, the video signal off of the unit so um, all the port availability is perfect um, everything is nice and neat you can access everything super awesome um, the console slot has a good surface for supporting the console um, that is in the front here and on the back. So if you look, there's plenty of space to actually support the console so that it's not um, putting any unneeded um, pressure on the console itself or the unit. Um, you don't want this to break off. So it's at the perfect angle. Um, everything looks really good. Uh, finger grips. Something you don't think about, but the finger grips right here. You have one here and one on the other side. And that's for grabbing it like this and pulling the thing out of the, uh, the cable. Um, perfect little thing. I wouldn't have thought about that. Uh, but it's definitely an awesome add. And I think, it's, uh, I think it adds to the refinement of the, uh, the design. One thing we, uh, we don't think about when we get something like this is 
something super simple like rubber feet. And these rubber feet are amazing. There is such a good grip. Like, you cannot... I'm moving my whole desk just by putting a little bit of pressure on this. I think that's awesome. Um, I was super happy to see that when I took that out of the package. And, uh, like I said, that's just something that gets overlooked by a lot of people. Um, and I think that's an awesome thing that he added on there. Um, of course, it's an added cost to him, but I'm sure that he bought, like, hundreds of those feet for just a few bucks. And um, spending a little bit extra money to get people an excellent quality product is, uh, is top-notch. And uh, I think that's really awesome. Um, another thing that I think is really awesome with his design is everything is super uniform as far as all the spacing um, with the print and everything else. It's real clean. Um, he's even got a little space right here for the access lights so you can see them working, um, which is awesome. Going to the next thing. Um, things that need improvement. Um, so an obvious thing here, and this is just a personal preference. Um, it by no means makes the product um, any less of what it is. Um, it doesn't interfere in anything except for aesthetics. And to me, that is the finish on this product. Um, it is a 3D printed product, so I do understand that it's not going to be perfectly smooth and stuff like that. Um, this doesn't really bother me that much, but to see it in a finished product, and please do understand this is not a finished product. This is a prototype. Um, so this is just something that I would like to see in future iterations. Um, this can be fixed with um, injection molding. Again, this is just a part of the process for the 3D print. Um, it's just, it is what it is. Some do it worse, some do it nicer. Um, you can sand this, which is perfectly fine. Um, if you wanted to continue doing 3D prints, um, you could do a acetone bath. Um, I'm not 100% sure every step for that but basically you take a thing and it's a container and you put the acetone soaked um, cotton balls in the top of it so that just the vapor is touching the surface and then it's it smooths it out somehow um, I don't think that that would be very comfortable doing that um, because it's not something that you want to breathe in and um, I would think that spending all the time making this in a 3D print and then having it possibly ruined by acetone, um, that would really turn me off from the process. Um, so in all honesty, um, if you were to continue to 3D print, I would maybe 3D print it just a little bit thicker, just a tad bit thicker, um, so that you could sand it smooth. And uh, you probably wouldn't even have to do that to all of it. Um, this is a nice texture on here. Uh, maybe just sand this part. Um, and then on the front. And maybe the sides. Um, but like I said, this is cool. The, uh, the back and forth is pretty awesome. Love the design. Uh, this product is very, very cool. Um, I really am happy that, uh, you allowed me to, uh, to work with this. Um, another thing is... Like I said, the uh, the PSP or the PS Vita uh, 1000 connector, the thing that you included to mount this on here, is um, too thick as far as the spacing goes this way. Um, I don't think that you would be able to do it flush and still be able to hold the connector in there. So um, what I would do for the 1000 is I would include a little cover that basically, um, I mean, you wouldn't even really have to do that because of the way that this sits in here and, uh, the, I mean, the way that this sits in this slot. So, um, 
other than that, that is basically all the improvements that I can think of except possibly putting some vent holes in this area right on top. Um, that's just so basically the heat can come out. But again, it's not, um, it's not something that is really needed. Uh, maybe just a preventative measure. Um, you know me, I like to kind of over, overdo things. Um, so that I don't run into problems later on down the line. But again, this is just capturing video um, signal and audio signal. And um, there's not, I don't think that there'll really be an issue. Um, let's see. Things that you need to know if you are looking into getting into this. You must have a modified Vita. Um, if you are running a regular Vita that you got at a secondhand store or from a friend. Um, it's not going to be modded and you're not going to be able to capture the HDMI, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the video signal out through the USB, um, which is needed. That's the whole process for uh, making this dock. Um, if you do have a modded Vita, running custom firmware you can run add-ons um, for the video output via USB Bluetooth is needed for the audio um, if you're not worried about catch catching um, audio off of this then you don't have to worry about that but again if you are doing this um, it is modified already so you might as well just do the plug-in so you can capture or I'm sorry I uh, use the uh, the Bluetooth to um, to capture that and you do that through your actual settings on here. And you can also use the Bluetooth um, through the plugins, the custom firmware plugins um, that is an app on here um, after you put it on there to use both PS3 and PS4 controllers. The DualShock 4 offers touchpad support, um, which will be for the front screen. Um, no controllers that I know of offer back, um, support for the touchscreen back here. So, uh, with that being said, that is all for this wonderful product provided to me by my friend Tim. Um, once these go retail, I will, um, give a shout out and um, provide links to his store or wherever he is providing these. Um, again, this is an awesome product. This was perfect for what I needed um, to capture my video play off of here. And um, again, I want to thank him for having the patience with me. Um, I did receive this quite a while ago, and I've been super busy. I moved and everything else, and uh, bad weather excuses excuses uh, for not getting this out sooner but I did want to do this correctly I wanted to have all my notes good um, I wanted the presentation to be good and um, hopefully this does it for him and um, he is working on some other solutions I will uh, give you a full list of everything that he's working on if you guys want um, so please hit like subscribe let me know what you guys think about this. If you are looking for something like this, um, hit me up. Maybe we can uh, get something out early. Uh, I think it's super awesome that I was able to find him um, for this. And uh, I want to just thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.